Hey everyone, Nas from Astronomy here. So far this year I've been using my Canon T5i as my main astrophotography DSLR. All the galaxy pictures I've taken taken this year have been with the DSLR. It's also what I'm using to record this video with. But I've had my Canon T2i lying around in a, in a bag somewhere uh, since I've taken these pictures of the 2017 solar eclipse. So I, th I thought I would try and astro mod this and it went really well so now this is a hydrogen alpha modded DSLR. So uh, last week I decided to take pictures of a couple of galaxies uh, that I've already taken with my T5i and try to add more lights onto them, try to stack, try to do some more stacking. Uh, I figured since they were both from the same family, same Canon Rebel family, that I could just stack them because of the resolution and pretty much everything was the same. But I was wrong. The way they save the files is a little different. I don't know if it's a pixel mapping or or something else. Uh, it just didn't work. I tried Deep Sky Stacker and I tried Cyril and it would just say the image sizes don't match. So I ran into AstroPixel Processor, uh, which is a paid software, but you can get a 30-day free trial. And I decided to give it a go. I wanted to see if it can stack uh, multiple sessions with multiple DSLRs uh, or multiple cameras. Um, I used the same telescope for both sessions of my Nexstar 6SE, so that didn't matter. And I was really surprised and happy with the results that AstroPixel Processor spat out for me. Um, I did M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and M82, the Cigar Galaxy. And I thought I would record my process for one of them to show you how intuitive this is. Uh, it's mostly for documentation purposes, but I also figured that maybe it will help others decide um, whether they want to give the software a try, you know, if they're running into trouble with DSS or, or Serial or something else. Um, I haven't compared this with PixInsight, but that's something I plan on doing later on. But AstroPixel Processor has been great for me, and uh, we'll go through the process really quickly, and then at the end I'll show you my results, and we can decide whether it was worth it or not. So this is the interface of the AstroPixel Processor. When you start the app, the first thing it'll ask you is to select a working directory, so I'm just, I just created something called app. Um, and it's pretty intuitive. So we start, you know, on zero or you can go to one, uh, load and load our lights, flats, darks, if you use dark flats and biases. Um, and it will process them, calibrate them and assign them to lights uh, in each step. So I'm gonna enter the deep sky object name here. Um, and then I'll do lights. So my first session is from um, March 3rd, 2022, and I have about 104 of these. So I'm gonna add them all, and it's gonna ask you a couple of questions. I'm just gonna say filter head, because it's RGB. And here you need to pick, make sure you pick session so that uh, the calibration frames all get assigned to session one, and they all get stacked um, first, uh, and then session two, and then they get stacked later together. and it takes a couple of seconds to load everything. So there are lights and you can see a little preview of all the files here and it has the, the name session one um, and it tells you the exposure time, 90.1 seconds. My T5i is a little weird uh, when I did 90 second exposures. Uh, I'll do flats next. Oh, flat, I have a whole bunch. Apply filter and it's for session one. Next I'll do darks. I have as many darks. Session one again. Uh, I don't do dark flats, uh, although maybe I should. And then I'll do bias. I have a whole lot of these, so I'm not gonna select all of them. I'll do 60. I think 60 is more than enough. Uh, they're just easy to take, so I just take a whole bunch of session one and let it add to the list. Okay. Uh, and now I'm going to add my session two. So it'll be in. It's my uh, super smart folder naming convention. Lights. Whoops. Uh, M82. I have a lot of these, 90 seconds, session two. 
123 frames at 90 seconds each. Flats. So for these I have two sets because I had a piece of dust that moved from one side to the other. Um, I tried this before, I tried using both of them, uh, but I ran into issues, so I'm just going to select one. Uh, the And then, and then hope that the other gets removed, or I can um, remove it in post processing. So dark. So it'll be here. Session two. And finally, bias. I also have a ton of these. I'm not going to use all of them. This. Set that, session two. Yeah, 60, so I did 60 and 60. Okay, so we have all of our frames here. And, great, okay. So now we can go to the second one. So this UI is pretty intuitive once you look at it. Uh, don't let like all the bells and whistles intimidate you. So calibrate is next. I'm not gonna touch anything at all. I think it's pretty well optimized. Um, right out of the box and the button you can click is create masters and assign to lights so this will uh, combine the different calibration frames into a master and then um, it'll assign to the to the light frames to um, I think it subtracts and this can take a while because I have a lot of frames Okay, so the calibration has completed. Um, every time it completes a step, you hear a big dong. Once you uh, once you turn it off, I think you turn it off in the configuration. Um, they're gonna enable sound on process completion. Um, so, in your list of files, if you go to the bottom, you'll see that it you know creates a bunch of files. So it has a master flat, master dark, master bias, and some bad pixel maps as well. Um, so that's what the calibrate did. Now we'll go to the analyze stars um, section and I think it takes a, a few minutes as well. I don't remember if this is the fastest or register is the fastest, um, but again, I'm not uh, clicking, I'm not changing anything here. Okay, so the star analysis has completed and uh, I don't know if it created anything else here, but it doesn't look like it. So after analyzing stars, we'll have to go register the stars. Um, you can look at these settings too, but again, you don't have to since this is uh, set up to be most optimal uh, right now. So we'll do start registration. And if I'm not mistaken, start registration is a lot faster than the other processes. Um, yep, uh, registration took, uh, it was very fast. Uh, didn't have to wait um, more than like 20 seconds. Um, and then we'll go to normalize, the fifth tab here. Uh, again, I'm not going to do anything here. Uh, this one takes longer, uh, but it's worth the wait. Again, not going to touch anything here, so I'll do normalize lights. Okay, so the normalize has completed. It took a little while. Um, so the next tab we're going to go to is integrate, and this is probably going to take the longest to follow because this is what's stacking our all of our light, light frames into just one thing that we can... Uh, then post process later. Uh, I'm not going to change anything here either, um, just to show that just with the default stuff you can get something pretty, pretty good. So um, set the save directory if you don't want to save it where it already is, but I'm going to leave it there anyway. So I'll do integrate. Yep. So the name is M82. I'll just do um, Cigar Galaxy, just to make it a little bit more unique because that directory already has an M82. Press OK. 
so now it's starting the integration so this will take a while so let's see what happens near the end so the integrate piece actually took a couple of hours um, actually not a couple of hours maybe an hour and a half um, so this is the result it looks a lot better than what we saw in the output of uh, what deep sky stacker uh, spat out for me both times um, and I think it looks great so I think these two marks here are from the sadly the um, dust particle that moved from the edge of the screen to the near the center of the screen but I think I can there, there are no stars here so I think I can just fix that in Photoshop later um, we can now go into tools and do a bunch of stuff so you can you know you can crop you can modify the data you can um, multiply you can save uh, we can correct vignetting see if we can do anything so it'll ask say that you need to select eight boxes um, so you can just click and drag it's really not vignetting um, I don't really see any but you know gotta, gotta, gotta make eight just for demo purposes and then we'll do calculate And it takes a few seconds to calculate the vignetting and we'll see if we notice anything so yeah yeah it did that it doesn't actually look better so um i'll cancel it you can open it back up because it's a file uh, we can try and remove light pollution so it'll ask us to draw five boxes here so uh, let it load there we go Do one more here. Let's calculate. Oh, that looks a lot better. If I do this, I'll recalculate. Add another one. Remove yellow. Didn't like that yellow. So calculate. You can play around with this as, as much as you want and see um, where you get the best results. It's all yellow. Okay, but anyways, it it looks it looks pretty good. Um, so I'll keep this. I'll do OK save. It'll save a, a fits file uh, to your two bits in the same directory. It looks pretty good. I can zoom in. Thanks to light pollution and no actual filter, uh, I can't really see the spikes coming out of this. Um, let's see what we can do. We can calibrate the background next. So we need four. So I'll do this just around the galaxy really see if it did anything I'll just add here calculate okay I didn't really do anything but I'm gonna save anyway um, again saves another file they just appear in the sessions here the next we can do is uh, calibrate star colors So it just needs one. So you can pick just one area with a lot of stars. And we'll calculate. So if you want, you can add another section with more stars. You can recalculate. And then you'll see the gra graphs uh, populate more with uh, the colors. Um, I, think, I think this looks pretty good. I'll have to move this out some point but let me save this there we go it looks pretty good might have to pick up the saturation a little bit it does use up a lot of memory as you can see I'm, I allocated four gigs since I have 3.2 already um, so we can play around with these values um, this is a little bit more stretching here uh, I think you can neutralize background. Let's see what 
that does. That didn't do much. Uh, we can play with these as well. So if I do 20% background, 5 sigma, gets a little brighter. 30% is too aggressive, I think. Yeah, it's very aggressive. Um, no stretch. That's what it looks like. So this looks a lot more like uh, what we get out of Deep Sky Stacker. percent oops and if we do saturation there we go it actually saturated some of the the colors coming out of it which it looks really good um, considering I'm in a Bortle 7 area using just a basic DSLR and no um, no filters of any kind So I'm just playing around with this. You, should, you could play around this with this yourself and see what works for you. Twenty percent, five and zero. Let's see, yeah, that might be too bright. So I think I think ten, three, and zero was the best. Yeah, 10, 3, and 0 was the best. Yeah, I really like this one. And if you invert data, it just switches the blacks and the whites. Uh, you get kind of like a negative view of this. There you go. Okay, pretty cool. And the last thing to do is just, just save it. So once this is done, I'm going to click Save. Um, I'll save it as a 16-bit TIFF. Uh, you can also do 32 bits float, but um, but then you'll have to switch it in Photoshop anyway. This is the file name, so I'll do session one, session two. So I'll do um, M82 Cigar Galaxy RGB. So I'll save it. So it takes a few seconds to save. So as you just saw, the user interface of AstroPixel processor is very friendly and, and very intuitive, at least in my opinion. Uh, once you start messing with the tools, you can figure out how to make your uh, final product pop even more before you even export it into Photoshop. Uh, once I figured those out and I put it into Photoshop, I didn't have to do anything more than minor curves adjustments, minor levels adjustments, fix some noise, and that's about it. So I saved a ton of time there than when I used Deep Sky Stacker. Um, in the past. So I can see why they, why this is not a free software. I think they do earn their money charging, you know, 60 euros, about $65 uh, for an annual license, 160 euros, $171, $72 for a permanent license. Uh, I think it's worth it because it's, it's just so simple. Um, you don't really even have to do a lot to try and figure it out. I think if you just go in, just play around with it, it's easy to figure out. Uh, it was definitely a lot easier for me to figure out than Deep Sky Stacker when I first started out. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the final products that we're about to see. If you have any questions about any of this, do ask below. I will be happy to answer them for you. I plan on keeping, I plan on taking more shots of both of those galaxies in the future and adding them on, and I'll most likely use the AstroPixel processor uh, for that. Uh, I'm also going to try out PixInsight and see if I can get similar results and, and do a little comparison later on. So if you want to subscribe and, and come back when I do that, you know, please do that. Um, anyways, thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking with me. And I, I hope you enjoy the final output. Clear skies.